Aid workers from around the world are making their way to Nepal right now to help with the relief effort. After Saturday's massive deadly earthquake, a number of foreigners, including Canadians, were in Nepal when the earthquake struck. One of them is Montrealer Emily Ann LaRue. She's an intern with the International Organization for Migration. Emily Ann joins us live on the phone from Kathmandu. So, Emily Ann, what were you doing when the earthquake happened? Um, I personally was in a taxi. I was on my way to the airport um, because, unfortunately, I had to leave early from my internship because my dad was in the hospital uh, for heart surgery, and uh, I didn't make my flight, but my dad did a good job doing his surgery, so he's okay. And uh, so when the earthquake hit, I was in the taxi, and I thought it was car trouble at the start, but everything was wobbling so much that it became very clear, and the taxi driver knew right away what was going on, and he was really amazing he got me out and uh we were we we kind of ran to the side of the road and we weren't near any buildings so that was very lucky and uh we were just holding onto the handrails and waiting for it to pass but it must have lasted a good minute and um i mean fortunately i wasn't i wasn't near any buildings that collapsed or anything so i didn't see uh live uh, any any type of damage of that scale however um, the taxi driver, like I said, was so so amazing. He just kept uh, driving me because I, I had a, one panicky thought on my mind was I need to get to the airport. So this guy was very very amazing. We went back to my house get get my things and then we went off to the airport and just just driving around was complete utter chaos. And he was pointing out to me all the different uh, cracks and and broken things and there was bricks that w brick wall walls of bricks that had fallen. And uh, yeah, we had to stop a couple of times because there was other quakes like immediately right after on the Saturday around noon that it happened. But yeah, that's pretty much where I was. And then I, I had no idea how the scale, the scale of the impact. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not written in the sky, like which magnitude it is. And being the first major earthquake that I felt, I didn't, couldn't tell if it was a small one or a big one. You know, mm -hmm. I just thought it was, it was pretty intense. And one of my friends texted me and she was like, oh no, I hit my head. And what should I do? And she was all alone in, in another part of town. And I was like, just find someone to talk to and just, just deep breaths and just wait it out, you know? But I think a lot of people were immediately texting, calling and on Facebook and everything and just, just generally freaking out, like right in that first half an hour. Uh, it didn't stop, obviously, because the aftermath kept coming. And, and what are you seeing on the ground today? Um, do you know, today it has been two and a half days since the initial earthquake, and it has also been about, I would say, 12 hours since any, like, like aftermath that, that we were able to feel. So I think calm is starting to, to make its way into people's hearts, and I really hope so, because um, here at the UN we're really, we're really afraid of um, people having panic, and uh, there's a lot of misinformation about being able to predict earthquakes, you, you can't do that, but some people on the radios have been uh, saying there will be another one, and then some people have been saying with time, and then people are running out, and it's causing a panic, and it's causing people to act brashly, and so we need to avoid that. And so I think today has been a good day in, in terms of flying in lots of staff from all over the world, uh, specialists from uh, the Office of Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. They've been They've been doing excellent work. They've been working like 16 hours a day here. It's absolutely amazing to be uh, within the UN house. And uh, unfortunately, me and my friends were just interns here. Uh, but there's no way we're going to sit around. So we've been, uh, you know, kind of being on support staff for them. Uh, there's a lot of these coordination meetings. And 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 oh, sorry. no, that's okay. And Emily and I want to ask you because uh, what's the what is the Canadian government d been doing to help Canadians connect with their families um, back home? Yeah, actually, I I, I mean I don't want to waste waste time talking about our individual situations, but um, they haven't been doing much. And I think comparatively to many of the other um, countries that have uh, foreign nationals here in Nepal. The Canadian government has been doing barely anything. Um, that is to say that they sent us an email from Delhi telling us to be compliant with local authorities. And, of course, we are because we're not going to run around breaking the law. We're just trying to survive. But um, so even some people's have, parents have called into the emergency hotline for Canadians and they've gotten very drab, drab responses and uh, calling the embassy doesn't work. And... 
I don't know. I haven't personally tried to contact them because I have I had didn't have very high expectations, but other people have been feeling very panicky, especially because the other countries are evacuating their nationals, and that's even like South Korea, China, and India, Bangladesh. Like they're all doing a really excellent job of of evacuating all their other people, whereas Canada, we don't even get a phone call. <laughs> So now, so, I, yeah, now I understand uh, you spoke at the beginning about this, that you were trying to get home to see your father. I'm glad to hear that he's doing all right. When will, yeah, you, when, when will you be able, and we've got a picture, you've sent us a picture. That's just great. He's smiling, looking great. When will you be yeah. able to make it home? Um, I'm hoping to be able to fly home on Thursday was the latest news. I'm with Qatar Airways and, like, uh, I can't say they're doing the best they can because I don't know the situation, but I'm just very jealous because all these other people who, if their embassy wasn't able to step in and prioritize them, they, they got their parents to pay or they got another situation, and I just, I'll just i just wait because I can't pay my way out of this. I just need to wait for them to reschedule me another flight, and I'm very frustrated that I have to wait for a, a whole week, although I was booked last Saturday. So, so your dad had What can you do? Yeah, what can you do? And you seem to be taking it all in stride. Nice to hear that you're there and you're pitching in and you're helping. But uh, obviously, you want to see your dad. He's had heart surgery. What are you going to say to yeah. him when, when you see him? I don't think I'm going to say much. I'll probably yeah. just cry and hold him for a long time. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't blame he you. He knows. Yeah. Well, Emily yeah. and we, um, we appreciate you taking the time, and we wish you the best of luck in the days ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Have a good day. You too.